Uh, I will uh, talk mainly about the um, associative uh, connections related to the Brazilian area, uh, mainly uh, to the uh, arco fasciculus uh, and superior digital fasciculus, but if I talk compared to a discussion in this, uh, in this two charts, then the uh, middle longitudinal uh, fasciculus, the imperial longitudinal fasciculus, and then the tracts related to the uh, insula, that is the uncinent fasciculus and the imperial occipital uh, fasciculus. And I will also talk a little bit about uh, the areas of uh, tract intersection. So first, uh, the arco fasciculus, uh, Dr. Gomor has already talked about uh, this connection. Uh, <clears throat> Um, this uh, connection is uh, composed uh, mainly of three tracts. Uh, there is a long connection, a long uh, segment of the arcus fasciculus, you can see it here in red, that goes from the uh, frontal lobe, at the frontal operculum, at the present of gerus, and the uh, posterior part of the inferior and middle frontal gerus, uh, and then goes uh, at the level of the frontal and parietal operculum, turns around, at the caudal end of the signal fissure and goes inferiorly to connect to the uh, posterior temporal uh, posterior temporal lobe here <coughs> at the level of the uh, inferior and middle temporal uh, gyrus. We also have a, a vertical segment, a vertical connection that is lateral to the long segment here that connects the angular gyrus with the uh, middle temporal gyrus. And we also have a um, horizontal or anterior segment that goes from the uh, supramarginal gyrus to the uh, presential uh, gyrus. I know there is a lot of discussion related to the uh, names of all these connections and including also the superior longitudinal fasciculus as part of this uh, connection or uh, organ. <clears throat> so here is the dissection of this uh, long segment of the uh, arcuate fasciculus. Uh, that, as you can see here is the insula, a dissection of the insula, and here we have opened the operculum, the frontal, uh, parietal, and temporal operculum, and the temporal lobe, and you can see the, the direction of the fibers. And you can see how they go, how, how this fiber um, curves at the caudal end of the uh, insula. Here is the pars uh, orbicularis, pars triangularis, and pars opericularis of the inferior frontal gyrus. And as you can see, the main termination of this connection is at the level of the uh, ventral part of the presental gyrus. This is presental sulcus, so this is posterior to the presental sulcus, and it's at the level of the ventral part of the presental gyrus. So uh, this area is a very important uh, area of fiber uh, intersection, and we study uh, the, the anatomy of this area. Here you can see the uh, pars uh, orbicularis, pars triangularis. Parasitic and here the uh, ventral part of the presental gyrus. So here is the central sulcus, the postcentral sulcus, and the presental sulcus. So at this level, we found that the arcuate fasciculus uh, terminates uh, at this level here with a specific organization. The uh, horizontal segment uh, or anterior segment terminates at the posterior uh, part of the presental gyrus. The uh, arcuate fasciculus terminates a little bit more anterior to that, and the pyramidal pathway at this level was displaced anteriorly, uh, so it was just posterior to all this uh, connection. This is a very important area because it's the, uh, the final speech output area, because here we have the, uh, the cortex of the uh, phonatory musculature. So at the end, the, the, the final pathway of the language terminates here and goes from here to the brainstem to the uh, phonatory musculature. So here is the area where we, uh, when we stimulate, we uh, normally identify the speech arrest. There is a combination, there is a, a complex uh, response because we have bottom response of the phonatory musculature, the, the tongue or the lips <coughs> or the larynx, and we also have uh, the uh, area of speech arrest where the patient has a, a, an arrest of uh, content. Here is the organization of this uh, specific uh, area. So, <clears throat> with, uh, with this case, uh, I will explain the uh, surgery uh, when we have a tumor related to the arcuate fasciculus. Here we can see a, a temporal tumor. Uh, it's a recurrent low grade glioma, 
was previously operated. And at the superior margin of the tumor, we can see the vertical segment of the arcofesticles and also the long segment of the uh, arcofesticles. So at the posterior and superior margin of the tumor, we are expecting to find a function, a language function for here in the left side. This is a left side tumor. So <clears throat> here is a, the MRI in the surgical position, in the surgical perspective. So here at the posterior and superior margin of the uh, of the skin. We use interpretive electrical stimulation, mapping this uh, bipolar stimulation in the patient away. Here is the uh, surgical view, so you can see here the head. Here is the craniotomy. There is the surface is a little blurry because the, as is a recurrence tumor, the dura mater was attached uh, to the uh, cortex. So here we can find the uh, central sulcus is here, and here the uh, ventral part of the present of uh, the gyrus. And here is where we say that this determination of the arcuate and uh, you know, the anterior segment of the uh, so here is where we found the sphincterless area. Here is the tumor. Here is the cilia fissure. So here is the tumor. And at the posterior margin, where we were expecting, uh, at the level of the cortex, we found areas of anomia during the stimulation at the uh, T1, at the superior uh, temporal gyrus, and also at T2. After doing the, the other section, uh, subcortically, we also find at the posterior margin of the section uh, language areas. Again, Related to the connections of the arcofesticles. Here you can see the postoperative uh, tractography. So we perform a postoperative tractography. Here is the resection cavity. And at the posterior margin of the resection, you can see a postoperative tractography with the reconstruction again of the arcofesticles. And we see a residual tumor related to the, um, to the, to the arcofesticles, to these. The functional labels related to the posterior margin of the resection. <clears throat> then we go to the uh, middle longitudinal uh, fasciculus. The middle longitudinal fasciculus, here you can see the arco fasciculus, the long segment of the arco fasciculus, as a uh, reference. Here we can see this, the insula. So this is the frontal operculum, parietal operculum, and temporal operculum. So as you can see, there is a small track here in purple. That, uh, go, uh, that is connected to the uh, superior temporal gyrus and goes uh, it goes uh, medial in the long segment of the arcofesticulus. So connects the, the superior temporal gyrus and terminates at the superior uh, parietal lobe and interparietal sulcus. This is the middle longitudinal fasciculus. You can uh, it's sometimes confusing. Uh, you can confuse this track with the uh, vertical segment of the arcofesticulus, but in fact it's very easy because the uh, uh, vertical segment is lateral to the long segment of the arcofasciculus, and the medial uh, longitudinal fasciculus is medial to the long segment of the arcofasciculus. So you can see here very clearly the, uh, the difference between these two connections. Here is a dissection of the uh, temporal lobe to find the uh, middle longitudinal fasciculus. So here you can see the head and this arrow as a reference to you know what we are uh, dissecting. Here is the cilia fissure here. So all this is a temporal lobe. We have opened the temporal lobe <clears throat> at the level of the uh, uh, inferior temporal sulcus. So this is superior temporal sulcus, middle temporal sulcus. And here we have opened, like a book, the temporal lobe. And we can see here the arcuate fasciculus. And medial to that, we see the uh, medial longitudinal uh, fasciculus. As you can see, medial to the long segment of the arcuate fasciculus, these vertical fibers are the uh, long segment of the arcuate uh, fasciculus. You can see here many of the tracks that we hear from the cilia fasciculus that we will talk uh, later. This is a surgical case where we identified a function related to the middle longitudinal fasciculus. You can uh, find a, a frequently function at the superior temporal uh, gyrus related to the uh, middle longitudinal fasciculus. And in this case, we found a function at the level of the temporal pole, language function. Here is the tumor. It's a, again a local glioma, again a recurrent uh, tumor. And we found that the anterior temporal lobe uh, was uh, connected to the middle longitudinal fasciculus. As you can see here in green, this connection that is medial to the long segment of the arcuate fasciculus. Here is the, again the surgical perspective. I think it's very important to review the cases uh, and the MRI in this uh, perspective to, to orientate during surgery. <coughs> 
so here is the, the, surgical, the surgical view, the craniotomy. Here is the cerebral fissures, and this is the temporal lobe. And here uh, is the superior temporal uh, terminus. So here is the tumor. And um, so we, do, we did a double section of the, the, the tumor. So as you can see here, at the temporal bone and the anterior part of the temporal lobe, we identified a function uh, here, a uh, language function here. Uh, areas of anomia here and here. This area was connected to the middle of the pleural fasciculus and also subcortically, as you can see in this data here, we also find function related to this area. So this area was probably connected to the middle of the pleural fasciculus. Here uh, are screens of, of the uh, neural navigation where you can see that uh, this area, this label here, is related to this green track that is the middle of the pleural uh, fasciculus. Then we go to the inferior longitudinal fasciculus. The inferior longitudinal fasciculus <clears throat> is not a very similar track. This track is located at the, uh, at the basal temporal lobe. This track is a longitudinal connection that goes from the anterior temporal lobe to the posterior temporal lobe and the occipital uh, lobe. Here in blue, you can see the middle longitudinal in, in red. Uh, and you can see the difference between these two connections. So the inferior longitudinal fasciculus to find this track, we have to go through the inferior temporal gyrus. That's why uh, it's at the depth of the inferior temporal gyrus, and that's why I'm saying that it's uh, uh, off, uh, away from the uh, perisilian, uh, from the opercle, from the perisilian uh, Here we can see again the temporal lobe. We have opened the temporal lobe. Here we can see the arcuate fasciculus, middle longitudinal. This is the temporal horn with the hippocampus. And here we can see this connection that goes uh, longitudinal, so parallel to the malleable axis of the temporal lobe, and is the middle, uh, the inferior longitudinal uh, fasciculus here and here. So it's very close. We have displaced a little bit, but it's very close to the uh, temporal horn of the ventricle. So it's just laterally inferior to the temporal horn of the ventricle. Here we can see again the inferior longitudinal uh, fasciculus. This is a, again a surgical case where we identify a function related to the inferior longitudinal uh, fasciculus. So it's a tumor that infiltrates the temporal lobe and the insula. Again, the surgical perspective. So we are expecting to find a function at the inferior margin of the tumor and posterior margin of the tumor. So here, related to this area uh, here. This is the craniotomy, the uh, surgical uh, mapping, the cortical surgical mapping. Here is the tumor. Projection. So here again, the speech arrest related to the ventral part of the central gyrus, and here a areas of anomia. So we perform the resection, and again at the inferior and a posterior margin of the resection, we identify these areas uh, of anomia related to the inferior longitudinal fasciculus. Here you can see the insular surface, the insular surface, so the temporal issues is here. The temporal stem, and here is related to the inferior longitudinal fasciculus, these two areas of anomia. Here is, here is a, again a screenshot of the neural navigation system, and here we can see the inferior longitudinal fasciculus related to these labels uh, here. Okay, and we go uh, now to the uh, uh, tracks related to the insula. We have two main connections related to the insula the uncinal fasciculus and the inferior from the occipital fasciculus, the tract that cross to the insula. Uh, here you can see the arco fasciculus as a reference, the long segment of the arco fasciculus, and here you can see the projection of the insula. So here you can see the uncinal fasciculus in blue. Okay, it's a hook, uh, it's a new set uh, tract that goes from the uh, basal frontal lobe to the uh, temporal uh, home to the anterior temporal and cross to the lumen insula here and the anterior part of the lumen insula. And here is the inferior uh, frontal uh, fasciculus that, go, that is a long connection that goes from the parietal lobe, occipital lobe, and temporal lobe posteriorly that goes medial to the arcuate fasciculus, as you can see, it's a big connection, crosses to the uh, temporal isthmus here, to the uh, temporal isthmus, then goes uh, crosses uh, through the insula, again through the anterior and ventral part of the insula, and then it crosses the anterior uh, the isthmus here to go to the frontal operculum and the basal frontal, uh, 
de frontal, ni de frontal cerebro, sino de frontal cerebro, is the main connection, the connection anterior. <coughs> so, uh, you can see the are the ulcerate is anterior to the uh, inferior frontal cervical fascicle at the level of the insula and also at the level of the temporal, uh, of the temporal uh, incident. Here is the dissection of the inferior frontal cervical fascicle. We have removed the insula here. Here was the temporal lobe. We have removed also a big part of the temporal lobe. Here is the temporal cone with the hippocampus. Here is the inferior endothelial fasciculus, which is placed posteriorly. And here we can see the ulcerate fasciculus crossing to the insula and the inferior from the cervical fasciculus crossing to the ventral and anterior part of the uh, insula. Here is another, uh, another section. We can uh, elevate this uh, inferior from the cervical fasciculus, as you can see here. And what we see below is the uh, optical radiations here. This is the optical radiations, okay, just below the inferior frontal cervical fasciculus, <clears throat> and, uh, and here the lateral surface of the cutane. Here is the gray matter, the lateral surface of the cutane. Uh, this is a surgical case where we identify function related to the inferior frontal cervical fasciculus. The uh, tumor goes from the, front, from the temporal lobe uh, and gets in the insula. So here is the, uh, the tumor in the, in the surgical perspective. Here is the uh, tumor, the projection of the tumor, at the temporal lobe here, and infiltrating also the insula. This is areas of uh, functional areas, the speech arrest again, and anomias areas here. And once we perform the resection of the temporal lobe, identify here areas of semantic paraphrases at the level of the temporal isthmus that is related to the inferior from the cervical uh, fascia. But here, we identified areas of semantic paraphrase. The inferior frontal cervical fasciculus is related. It's a drug in the left side related to language and is, uh, is part of the ventral uh, semantic screen. So, stimulating of this drug, we normally identify semantic paraphrases. Here is again the tractography and the screenshot of the notification to see how we identify this area here that is related to the this label here is the uh, this drug we do that is the inferior from the cervical fasciculus. Here is the postoperative tractography where we identify the again a residual tumor related to the left inferior from the cervical uh, fasciculus. And just to terminate the presentation, uh, I would like to talk about this area of the uh, fiber uh, intersection in the field. All these tracks, all these connections are uh, very close one to the one to the other. They are just separated a few millimeters. One to the other. So during surgery, it's very difficult to identify each drug individually. We normally stimulate and identify a response where we uh, really, really don't know if we are stimulating one drug or the drug that is uh, right in, in contact with the other drug. As you will see, this, all these connections are here in this area, here, very close one to the other. This area is the posterior part of the, uh, the temporal lobe and also the uh, inferior parietal lobe, especially the angular gerus, where there is an intersection of all these connections. So as you can see, there is the vertical segment of the arthro fasciculus, long segment of the arthro fasciculus here in uh, orange, middle longitudinal fasciculus in red is also intersecting here, the inferior longitudinal fasciculus is, uh, is intersecting here, the inferior from the cervical fasciculus, uh, uh, these are the optical radiations here, and we also have the uh, tapetum, the corpus callosum, just below these, um, these uh, connections here. So if we go from medial to lateral, we have the tapetum, the corpus callosum, you can see here, then the optical radiations, then the inferior from the fasciculus, then the, uh, the inferior longitudinal fasciculus, the medial longitudinal fasciculus, the long segment of the arcus fasciculus, and the vertical segment of the arcofistic. So here, uh, if we stimulate here, it's very difficult to know if we are stimulating one track or the other, okay? And if we, uh, and it's a very important area because if we damage this small area here, we will induce a disconnection of practically all the associated uh, tracks of the hemisphere. So we will damage and we go from lateral here to the ventricle, for example, and we cross all this connection, we will disconnect the, uh, the uh, whole uh, hemisphere. So we will, uh, we will have to plan our trajectory uh, posteriorly or anteriorly, but never through this area here. 
this is the superficial projection of this temporal variety of family in the central area. Then you can see it's related to the uh, uh, angular gyros here and posterior part of the superior, tem inferior, and middle temporal gyros. And here is the dissection of this uh, area of the fiber intersection. So you can see the long segment of the arcuate, vertical segment uh, in middle longitudinal, inferior from occipital, crossing to the insula, that's here, you can see here the dam and the ventricular spirit arteries, the optic radiations here, the uh, radius loop, the temporal horn with the hippocampus, and the inferior longitudinal fasciculus in here. So here is the area of fiber in intersection in the area here. Juan, yes. sorry to interrupt you. Is is it possible to check on your sound because uh, it's is not very clear? Uh, you have, there is a lot of echo. I don't know if there is anything you can do on your computer to make it better. Uh, okay. Maybe changing the microphone to a different microphone. I'm not sure you can make it. Maybe you cannot make it better. But Let I have see. many of the attendees that are complaining about the 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 sound with a lot of echo. Can you hear me now? Maybe it's better now. Try now, Albert. Let's see. Okay, so now you can hear? I think that's better, actually. Okay. So, yes, uh, things in my presentation, uh, this is a final uh, case <coughs> where uh, you can see the, um, where you can see the, um, the this temporal uh, tumor, this uh, posterior uh, temporal tumor related to the uh, inferior temporal uh, gyrus. So uh, this tumor is related to this uh, temporal, uh, temporal uh, parietal fiber intersection area here. As you can see, the superior margin of the tumor is, uh, is related to this area of fiber uh, intersection. Here is again the surgical uh, perspective, the surgical uh, view. So we are expecting to find function related to the superior uh, margin of the, of the tumor. Um, this is the uh, surgical uh, perspective, the, the craniotomy, uh, and here is the tumor uh, here. So at the uh, at the um, superior part of the at the superior part of the uh, of the, the tumor, we find we can uh, see these uh, labels here, these uh, two numbers. <coughs> and uh, once we have performed the resection. At the superior margin of the section, we identified subcortically many areas of uh, function here and here. So here is the tumor and uh, areas of function at the uh, white matter uh, here, Alexia and Anand. And this is the uh, postoperative tractography with a residual tumor related to this temporal parietal fiber intersection area. So you can see we have preserved the conditions uh, um, and uh, as we found the function uh, at the superior margin of the tumor. So uh, thank you very much uh, for your attention. I hope, uh, sorry for the, for the problem with the sound. I hope you could uh, hear me. And, uh, and thank you very much for your, for your attention. Thanks, Juan. That was a very nice presentation in spite of the sound. Uh, you have a lot of expertise, which we appreciate. Um, I think there is a question from the panelists that I don't know if you, you would want to answer. Um, we talk about the asymmetry of the front of the uh, arcuate fasciculus. Do you think in a patient or person that is left dominant, strongly left dominant, that the arcuate tract is uh, dominant on the left, on the right hemisphere instead of the left? Excuse me? Do you think that we have a question about the asymmetry of fiber tracts and we said the yeah. arcuate fasciculus is asymmetric in most cases. But if there is a patient that is left-handed, um, yeah. strongly left-handed, not both, just strongly left-handed, do you think that uh, patient would have a stronger right arcuate fasciculus, asymmetric? Um, uh, probably, yes. Um, I think that the, the, the right arcuate fasciculus is also very important for many other Function related to, for example, to social cognition, uh, to prosody recognition, and to many other functions. So, um, uh, I, I, in my dissections, I haven't seen many differences between both sides. You said that you preferably find like two thirds uh, 
left-sided and uh, one third uh, right-sided. No, the 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 yeah uh, the this asymmetry, this uh, big asymmetry. Uh, in my experience, I haven't find many asymmetries in this uh, in this uh, connection, but. Uh, but yes, probably in a very left-sided, uh, left-handed patient, uh, the language uh, will uh, probably be located in the right side, in the right hemisphere. So um, uh, it will probably have a, a bigger uh, arc of fasciculus. But um, but in fact, as we as we saw in the presentation, uh, language is related to uh, all the connections at the same time. So. I, I don't think we should uh, uh, focalize in the long segment of the arcofasciculus as a as a sign of a, of lateralization for language, because in fact uh, if there is a, a whole uh, connectivity, uh, vertical, inferior longitudinal, uncinate, inferior front occipital, all at the same time are uh, are the main connections uh, that uh, mediate uh, uh, language function. So uh, I don't know in in this specific case if we will find. Uh, and many difference in, in, in both sides. Maybe uh, the same uh, laterality, but uh, but uh, maybe other connections or, or the, the 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 combination of all the connections would be stronger in the in the in the right side in this in this patient. Yeah, certainly a fascinating topic of research. Um, we also remember finding that the the what we call the parietal lateral tract or that vertical tract of the arcuit is also lateralized, uh, suggesting that's a very important, as you, you said, the temporal parallel junction is also very uh, eloquent for language, um, yes. as you also saw in your mapping studies. So um, that's great, very good. Thank you so much, Juan. Probably probably what you say, that the, the is the, probably not the arcuate, but at least all these temporal parietal fiber intersection areas that combines all the connections, really, or mostly all the connections related to language, probably you could find a difference in, in, uh, in the anatomy of this area in a left side or, or, or in a left-handed or right-handed patient. Probably you could find a combination of all these connections. Exactly. Great. Wonderful. Thank you so much. Thank you. So next we have with us, uh, I don't see any more questions for the participants. Please feel free to uh, type any questions and we'll address them as they come. Um, we um, have next uh, Julius.